All right, saddle hunters, I'm bringing you another saddle review today. This is by Custom Gear Modifications, the Sidewinder. Just a quick disclaimer, I don't know anybody that works for Custom Gear Modifications. Uh, I did not purchase this saddle. Uh, they did reach out to me and they asked if I'd be willing to do a saddle review and I told them that I would. With that, I am able to do a 100% honest review. All right, let's get this thing unboxed. Okay, so the Sidewinder comes in at $175. Uh, you do have the option to upgrade your order with a seven foot, eight millimeter Oplux tether, uh, if you choose. Uh, the Sidewinder comes in three sizes, a small, medium, and large. I believe the small is up to a 34 inch waist, the medium is up to a 38 inch waist, and the large is up to a 44 inch waist. Right off the bat, uh, just looking at it, it looks really sweet. I do like that your leg straps are completely removable. They have two tri-glides right here. One above and one below that hold it in place under that one inch webbing. All you would do is slide the tri-glide down and remove those and you could take your leg straps off. Your G-hook connects the two panels together. And holds it in place on the walk-in. And to deploy it, you just unhook that G-hook. It's hard to do backwards here. And deploy the, the panel. Has a eight millimeter Oplux bridge. It does have Amsteel Prusik knots on each end holding it onto the bridge loops. Uh, so it's fully adjustable on both sides. It comes with a Amsteel waist belt. Put some pressure on that and that holds right in place. And then just release nice and easy to release your waist belt. Now your waist belt also slides all the way through the saddle so you can adjust where you want the positioning to be. It also has additional loops sewn here off the bottom webbing. Okay, so I just wanna start out by saying I do not repel. I don't know the first thing about repelling, so I don't wanna pretend that I do. So I'm just telling you that right up front. Um, but what I have learned from talking with CGM, as well as doing a little bit of research online, um, your bridge loops, you would tie into with your mad rock or some other belaying device then you still have your traditional um, lineman's loop and then you have a two inch loop on the bottom uh, that you would use a friction hitch to assist in repelling so your molly loop up top is only for a gear loop that's not load bearing or weight bearing i just thought that was uh, something worth pointing out. In my opinion, it's very unique to the Sidewinder. I've not seen that offered in any other saddle. The Sidewinder comes in at one pound, seven ounces. You do get one row of molly all the way across the top. Uh, they do look like they're sewn somewhat tight. It's kind of hard to get a finger under there. Um, shouldn't be a problem getting dump pouch attachments through there. All right, so I'm gonna get the dump pouches put on. We're gonna put the saddle on. We're gonna wear it in, see how the dump pouches ride, uh, how the uh, molly loops line up, test the uh, lineman loops ascending the tree. We're gonna sit for an hour. I'll uh, test the bridge functions uh, as well, the length as well as up and down the bridge loops. We'll Descend the tree using the lineman loops again and see how the dump pouches wear out and I'll give you my overall opinion when we get back to the truck.
All right, well, I'm just getting my umbrella set up. I'm in the tree. Let's get the timer going because I got my tether on. All right, so we're in the sidewinder for one hour. It's actually going to be way over an hour because I've been in the sidewinder for a while trying to get this umbrella set up. I'm trying to separate the panel, uh, the top and bottom section of the panel with that G hook. That took way longer than it needed to. Um, I had to unhook my leg straps to uh, give the bottom of the saddle a little bit of movement so I could try to pull up on it and free that G hook. Uh, that was really difficult. So on the walk-in, the Sidewinder kept sagging down below my hips. Uh, I think it was a combination of two things. One, the weight of my dump pouches, and for two, this Amsteel uh, waist belt was not holding it tight enough. So I kept pulling the saddle back up and I would grab that tag end and pulling it tight. Uh, and then, you know, a short distance later, it was doing the same thing. Now, when I got to the tree and I was still on the ground trying to hook up to my lineman's uh, loops, it was doing the same thing. Uh, the saddle was dropping down below my hips. I kept pulling it up and trying to cinch that waist belt down. As I was ascending the tree, it continued to do the same thing. So, bottom line, uh, the Sam Steel belt was not holding the Sidewinder up in position uh, tight. It kept loosening up, the dump pouches kept pulling it down on the walk-in as well as while ascending the tree. Now what that does is, when the saddle drops down, that, that put the pulling point on my lineman's rope below my hips, which feels really awkward. You feel like you could tip backwards. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Now as far as the molly loops, um, they're far enough forward. They work just fine. They were easy to access. Uh, with both your traditional style attachment as well as your tri-glide. As far as the Oplux Bridge, it slides nicely. Uh, just like all 8mm Oplux, it slides nicely. Easy to turn for shots. Easy to pivot. You do have an adjustment for your length on both ends. Take your weight off. Loosen that Prusik up a little bit. That holds. Now as far as adjustability up and down your bridge loops, uh, we're in the middle now on both sides. So let's go ahead and move up to the high side. Loosen up that bite. And that held. So now let's move down to the bottom side. And that held as well. So you have full adjustability up and down the entire bridge loop. All right, so we'll finish out the hour and I'll give you my overall thoughts. Uh, it just quit raining, the uh, sun's starting to come out. I figured it would be a good time to let you know that I am gonna be doing a drawing on the Sidewinder saddle. Now, Custom Gear Modification, CGM, they were gracious enough to send this to me and allow me to do a review, and then they told me I could either keep the saddle or do a giveaway. Uh, I personally would rather do a giveaway and bless one of you with a free saddle. Uh, the only thing you have to do to be entered is one, subscribe to my channel. For two, drop me a comment below. Let me know that you'd be interested in being a part of the drawing and you're entered in. It's as easy as that. Now I will be doing the drawing in September, probably the second or third week of September. Uh, that'll give you plenty of time to receive the saddle and do a little practicing before season starts. All right, I just hit the one hour mark in the Sidewinder. So I'm gonna do a brief overview and then I'll descend the tree and I'll give you my final thoughts at the truck. On the walk in, the saddle did sag. Uh, I believe due to the weight of the dump pouches as well as 
the am steel not really holding it tight enough as well as ascending the tree uh, it kept wanting to sag down i kept having to pull it up uh, as far as the molly loops the molly loops work really well uh, they're far enough forward they're easy to access with your uh, traditional styled molly attachments as well as your tri-glides the g-hook on the back that holds the top and bottom of the panel together uh, was pretty difficult to unhook when I was in the tree. Uh, it took me several minutes to get that to come loose. The Oplux bridge slid really well through the carabiner. Uh, both adjustments on the length on your right and left side both held in position. They were easy to use. You have full bridge loop adjustments uh, for your pitch, top, middle, and the bottom. Uh, they all held. Uh, you have an additional 2-inch loop for rappelling uh, if you choose to do so. As far as comfort, uh, I've been comfortable in the Sidewinder the whole time. It reminds me a lot of the H2 Slingshot or the H2 Hot Shot. Uh, very similar feel. It's a comfortable saddle. With that being said, I'm going to descend the tree. I'm going to check out the Lyman's loops one more time walk out and just see if I can cinch this uh, am steel belt down really tight and see if I can keep the panel up as I'm walking out. So I'll see you at the truck. All right, my overall impressions of the Sidewinder. Uh, the Sidewinder uh, walking in uh, gave me a little bit of hassle with the uh, saddlebags pulling down and pulling that uh, top edge of the panel down below my uh, waist bones. I had to keep readjusting that again I did have the panel, the top and bottom of the panel clipped together with the G-hook and I also had the leg straps on. So that was pulling on the bottom of the panel which was pulling the top down. So on the walk out I did leave the top and bottom edge of the panel uh, apart while using my leg straps and it didn't fall down as much. You do have the ability to pull the am steel belt and shift it around to the left side that gives you a little more room to tighten it up now if you pull on the other end and stretch that out versus having it bunched up like this uh, it just slides at that point so if you tighten the belt up and then pull this end out and kind of center the belt it does tend to hold a little bit tighter. The other thing that I noticed is if you're going to walk in and out with your leg straps attached with the G-hooks, it's better if you leave the G-hook on the back undone and leave the top and bottom portion of the panel separated. If you have the top and bottom portions connected with the g-hook and you're wearing your leg straps those leg straps are pulling down on the bottom side of that panel and it's making the top come down so my recommendation would be to either unhook your leg straps all together on the walk-in and then you can hook those two top and bottom panels together or leave that unhooked and put your leg straps on, one or the other. When I came out, the saddle did sag a little. I like it to be up here on my hips, nice and snug. And it did keep falling down just a little bit, but not as bad as it did on the way in. Uh, so. That's one thing I learned just in this one uh, sit. The Lyman loops worked really well. I didn't have any problems there other than the saddle uh, continued to drop. Uh, the waist belt wasn't holding it in position very well. Uh, but again, I had my leg straps on as I ascended the tree. Uh, on the descent, the saddle did not drop down as much as it did on the way up. Again, I left the top and bottom edge of the saddle apart. I did not attach them with the G-hook. 
So the thing I wanted to point out about the Sidewinder with the G-hook, um, if the webbing that retains the G-hook was made a little bit longer, even just a quarter inch, maybe a half inch, it would allow that to come out a lot easier when you're up in the tree and you have pressure against the saddle. Trying to disconnect that, what happens is you push up and the G-hook hits the bottom of the molly loop webbing and then it, you don't have uh, a lot of room to, to twist the saddle like you do when you're standing here on the road. When you're wearing the saddle, it's really difficult to twist that and slide that off. It catches. Uh, overall, a really nice saddle. Uh, other than just playing around and figuring out how to uh, attach this waist belt nice and tight and keep it from pulling down, once you have that figured out, this is a great saddle. Um, really happy with it. So once again, I just want to remind everyone that the Sidewinder saddle is going to be given away to one of you. Uh, all you have to do is one, subscribe to my channel, two, drop me a comment below and let me know you're interested in being in the drawing and I'll get the winner picked sometime in September. I do want to thank Custom Gear Modifications for allowing me to do the review as well as the giveaway, so thank you. So with that being said, I hope you guys have the opportunity to get out there and enjoy your own adventures. Take care.